All right, so Katrina, we've got this formative assessment sample here of the uh, money uh, entry card. When you designed this, what was the key intent that you were really looking for? What, what skills and understandings were you trying to check or elicit from students? So we used the evidence of learning from the future lessons to um, see if the kids could identify Australian notes and coins, um, if they could order them, um, compare money amounts, and also look at um, complex and simple change. Mm. And if they were, I mean, throughout the questions we looked at um, misconceptions as well, by especially in the ordering part where we would put a, um, a note that is lower. We've got a $5 note here and a $20 note, but we put that before the 20 just to see if they could, um, you know, identify that properly and then order them. In the first question, we got the students to identify coins, Australian coins and notes. We didn't put all of them in, um, but obviously if they could identify a majority of them, it would, it would tell us that you know, they're okay with that. Uh, the second question was ordering um, coins and notes. Again, we didn't put all the notes and coins in. Um, and then in the third question, we got three money amounts with a mixture of notes and coins. They had to add those money amounts up individually and then circle the um, amount that had the most, the largest total. And then they had to explain why. That's where obviously a lot of the, a lot of the students have trouble with. So that why question is where we were really focused on in that um, in question three. And then from four to five, we looked at change and looking at um, a word problem. Okay, so thanks Katrina. So we've heard the key intent that you're really looking for in this task. So in relation to that, uh, I see you've all got your formative assessment samples in front of you. How did your students go with the task? The pleasing part was the, the, the first part, they could recognise coins and notes. So that, that showed us that um, their understanding there was better than we anticipated. Can you just explain to everyone else here what you're holding up there, Phil? Well, we just, we just basically marked the, uh, our entry card for the, ES, the um, money assessment to find out what they knew and what they didn't know, just to give us some insight into where we could actually focus our teaching. So in other words, they can, as Katrina said, they can recognise the notes and coins and they're able to actually add money quite well. Yeah. And on, on, on the whole, so you yes, the and then we 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 took the uh, the uh, identifiers here, quarter scriptor. the quarter scriptor, and just made a simple spreadsheet to so you can quickly look at where some students are still having difficulty. What pleased me the most was the amount of green in the first part, but the evidence showed that they still needed a lot more work on um, giving giving change and counting on money. So you're identifying giving change and counting on money were two areas for your class. Yes. Other teachers, did you have a similar story to Phil's or different? So I found that most of my students were fine, same as Phil, with identifying money um, and where they, a lot of them were able to actually add the money to find a total, but where they came in was with the multi-step, so when they had to actually give change or find two totals and the difference, that's where they came undone. So. Anybody else? Did anyone have a different story similar to Adam's and Phil's with the multi-step and the calculating change? No, I was just going to say a common problem if kids did get pulled up in the simple questions at the start was reading the questions correctly. True. Like ordering coins from smallest to largest value, they wrote from largest to smallest mm. value. So in the sense so they're still... Sorry, they're still ordering the coins, but as you say, they've got to read the question. Not really, not really. Yes, so it's ordered, but... And the same thing in the multi-step, it pointed out, um, do the kids have the right strategy to attack that question? Can they do a vertical algorithm? Mm. Or how? Count, counting, counting on. on. Counting on. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that thing about counting on came through, yeah. that they needed a lot more practice. So, have you had an opportunity yet to give feedback to your students for this task? Uh, if so, could you share with us how you did that and what was successful? And if not, what might you do in terms of giving feedback back to your students? Certainly. One bit of feedback, oh. as they did it, they had to highlight their tricky question. So it gave us feedback that even if they got it right, this is what they found hard. Um, and then in giving them feedback, you could say, 
this was a question you found difficult. And did you do that individually, Alice, or did you group them together? Uh, individually, they had to highlight. So they're all different. Some kids mm. uh, put the simple questions. Some of them found uh, just the multi-step. The majority have put the harder questions, the multi-step questions down the bottom. Change yep. questions. Mm. Yeah. Anyone else have anything they want to share on that? Similar to Alice? Yeah, similar to Alice. We just marked it as a class group and discussed it. And then the children were able to self-evaluate. And basically green was for good. Orange or yellow showed us where I'm having difficult or I need to... Uh, they chose those colours? They, yeah. they chose those colours. Yeah, they made the decisions of what they were Yes, yeah, not right or wrong, but yeah. I'm happy with this. I need more development or help here. Okay, so I just want to focus on that bit now that Phil just brought up in, the, in his orange. The, yeah the development, the improvement. So the key question I want to ask you is, what are the next steps for improvement for these students? You identified it's the counting on with change. Mm. How are you going to address that? How are you going to give students that feedback, feed forward information of their next steps for improvement? Well, I think it, uh, for, for my class, we've done a lot of, a lot of uh, visual work and a lot of uh, written work, but I think what they really need is some hands-on, actually using money uh, counting on actually uh, verbalising uh, the strategy to themselves as you would counting change in the shop. They need more practice with that. They know you money really well. Out loud as well. You yes, think thinking. Out think out loud. Mm -hmm. Thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. That's right. Lots of modelling. Lots models. of modelling. Daily warm ups. Yes. Daily warm -ups. Real world type examples. Warm ups. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, yes. I think getting in concrete um, materials really helped my students in counting on or counting up. Um, there are still a few that just, you know, money is a hard concept, that they just couldn't grasp that concept, but they did a lot better when they had that, um, that concrete material. So, looking at this task as a whole, so what is the key feedback to you for your teaching of this um, unit on money over the next few weeks that you have with your kids? I think we can fast track it a little bit because they've got the basic understanding there. So there's no need to cover that ground. Mm -hmm. We can spend more time focusing on this strategy of change. giving change, counting on, counting back and developing and those skills. And looking at totals and mm. understanding that, you know, um, 520s make a dollar mm. and all those different ways of making a dollar and understanding that they yes. have to, yeah. They different have to ways of creating the same money amount. Yeah. Yeah.